drone bile. Ne? Ne? Да ну нахуй! Да предохраните, брат, поставь! В машине дохуя. А в машине дохуя, да, что было, пацаны? Багиря, там два шмеля лежит, брат. Отойди, 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 Багиря. The Bradley IFV effectively hit Russian T-80 tank. Forbes described the details of the attack. The Ukrainian M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicle effectively hit the T-80 tank of the Russian invaders. This was one of the longest range direct kills of tanks in the Russian-Ukrainian war. As Forbes notes, the new $1 billion aid package from the United States for Ukraine includes a certain number of M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles. The only Ukrainian army unit using the M2, the 47th mechanized brigade, is fighting a desperate defense against a much larger Russian force advancing west of the ruins of Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine. The drone filmed one of the battles in which Bradley was spotted. So one evening, the M2 gunner noticed a Russian T-80 tank a few hundred meters away in a field east of the village of Novopokrovskoy. The M2 crew fired one TOW wire-guided anti-tank missile which penetrated the 43-ton tank. It is noted that this was one of the longest range direct kills of tanks in the Russian-Ukrainian war. But this probably came as no surprise to supporters of the legendary Bradley, which has been the main fighting vehicle of the US Army since the 1980s. The Bradley is not a tank, but it can be a tank killer, explains Mark Hurtling, a retired US Army general who commanded the M3 during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. The 33-ton, 10-seat M2 is arguably the best fighting vehicle in Russia's all-out war against Ukraine, which has now lasted more than two years. The M2 Bradley weighs tens of tons, less than a conventional tank, largely because its armor is much thinner. In close combat with a Russian tank, the M2 may not last long, but in long-range combat, accurate sights and tow missiles can give this vehicle an advantage. They are especially superior to occupying tanks at night when the Bradley's infrared optics help its crew see enemy vehicles before the tank crew sees the BMP. Between infantry support missions, the 47th Mechanized Brigade used the M2 to hunt enemy tanks. In one clash in southern Ukraine last summer, a Bradley crew knocked out two Russian T-72 tanks. Russia prepares to capture Kiev. Ukraine creates 10 new brigades against a new Russian attack. Alexander Pavlyuk, commander of the ground forces of the armed forces of Ukraine, has said that Ukraine plans to create 10 new brigades to prepare for a Russian offensive. Some of them will be formed for the potential defense of Kyiv. Pavlyuk said this in an interview with The Economist. The Economist notes that one of the most urgent tasks facing Pavlyuk is the creation of 10 new brigades to prepare for a Russian offensive. Pavlyuk insists that Ukraine needs more equipment than people. 
In particular, there is a significant shortage of artillery and armored vehicles, which he hopes the West will provide Ukraine with. Also part of these new forces, 10 brigades, will be deployed to defend Kyiv. The general said that two and a half years after the Russian army was blocked in Kyiv, it has not given up its ambition to finally capture the city. Defending Kyiv remains one of our main concerns, no matter how tough it is in the east. It is the heart of Ukraine, and we know the key role defense of the capital will play in the future, Pavlyuk added. He said that the Russian army can no longer conduct large-scale raids on several fronts. In addition, Russia is using missiles that have just come off the assembly line just a few weeks after production, rather than from its once huge stockpile. Ukraine's armed forces are also much larger than they used to be. This, Pavlyuk notes, remains a strategic defeat for Russia. According to Ukraine's official estimate, Russia has lost more than 400,000 killed, captured and wounded. The loss of so many soldiers to seize a small part of one region is disproportionate for any rational mind. The ground forces commander believes that in unpopular issues such as mobilization, every official must show leadership. Faced with mortal danger, some citizens panic, and this is natural, but if the country wants to survive, people must overcome the panic and answer the call to fight, as they do in countries like Israel. However hard it is, we have no other choice. In an interview with The Times, Alexander Pavlyuk confirmed that, based on Ukrainian intelligence, Russia does not indeed have a plan for the possible capture of Kharkiv and Sumy.